a look at creating silhouettes in letter forms. The idea of this is that we're going to take a standard silhouette of an animal, of an object, and then we're going to actually spell that animal or object inside of the silhouette. To do this, you're going to go over to Google Images and find a silhouette of an animal that you'd like to do. For example, I'm going to take out a bunny image and we're going to do a shark as well, just so you can see the process for two different animals. Neither of these animals can be used in your process, but it's a good way for you to learn the process and apply it in your own way. So I'm going to click on the image and I'm just going to simply go over to Photopea. Photopea is going to be used rather than Photoshop. Just when you don't have access to Photoshop itself, we can use Photopea at any point. Just go to photopea.com. I'm going to go up to File and New. And over my new document, I can call this Animal Silhouette or Animal Letters. I want to make sure that I start out with a new document. You're likely going to be seeing the social as the templates at the beginning. I'm going to actually click on Print and I'm going to click on letter down the bottom left. Right now, this is showing me the vertical format, but I'm going to switch this over to horizontal. So I'm going to hit this little double arrow icon that switches it so it goes a width of a document. Then I'm going to click Create. Now that I... and drag it onto my document. So I'm going to move over to the silhouette and click on it, it brings up the so I'm going to go over to the silhouette and click and drag it over so I'm going to go over to the silhouette and I'm going to click and drag it over to my white document I can scale it up, you see the bounding box just like Photoshop I have to make sure to click on the document and now I can grab a corner, click and drag it up. Remember, hold shift to maintain proportions. And I can hit enter to place. And if we take a look over in my layers panel, right now it says image. I can always rename it if I want to rename it. But I'm also going to go grab the shark image as well. With the shark image, I've already picked it out. I'm going to again click and drag this over. Just like the bunny image, we want to click and drag this over to our document. I'm going to scale this image up. Again, holding shift to maintain proportions. And I can enter to place it. Now that I don't need these silhouettes anymore, I can go full screen with my program. So I can hide the shark for right now. We're gonna take a look at the bunny first. I can zoom in, control plus sign, just like in Photoshop. So the idea of this is that we want to spell out the word bunny or rabbit within the actual design maintaining a separation of black letters with white to separate out those open areas. So again, creating positive space letters, the white will be the negative space opening up the gaps in between. So initially you want to make sure to create a new layer. This new layer is going to sit above the bunny layer. I'm going to call it bunny type. We're not going to be typing any letters. We're going to be using the paintbrush to help create gaps and spaces in between. And we create this separate layer so you're going to be more comfortable being able to erase, fixing mistakes, not painting directly onto the actual bunny layer. So over on the left side navigation, I'm going to go over to my paintbrush tool. When I click on that, if I move my cursor over, you see it's a very tiny brush size. I have to go up to the top navigation to adjust the size of my brush if I want to get larger. You cannot use the shortcut keys like in Photoshop. But 
right at the top navigation, there's a little white dot started out at 15. I can click a little drop down, click and drag it up. I can drop the hardness if I'd like, but I'm going to maintain that at 100. And I'm going to go a little bit smaller again with my brush. I want to first sketch out where I want to place the letters for my bunny. Down the bottom left, you can see again the fill and the stroke, or the foreground color and the background color. With the foreground color, it's currently white, so this will allow me to be able to draw inside of this area, but we're not going to simply give a poor effort on this project. We want to attempt to draw it out as professional as possible. I can always hit Control Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac. With the paintbrush, I'm going to look to sketch out where I want to place these letters. So if I want to go with bunny, I have to figure out how to place the B-U-N-N-Y. The reason why I chose this image, thinking about it, I have to figure out how I'm going to get each of those letters inside the shape. And one letter that stands out, I'm just looking at the silhouette, is the Y. If I look at these ears, they're already placed in for me to give me the capital Y shape that I need. It's just a matter of dividing this up. So with my, again, paintbrush, I'm going to go in just to sketch out, give me the initial look of where I want this Y to be. And again, we put this on the bunny type layer, separating it from the actual image. This way, if I want to go back, I can go over, look to erase it out. With the eraser tool, I can clean this up and redo it if I like. But now that I have that small little brush, I'm going to go back to the paintbrush and now look. I'm going to work backwards just because I have to think about how it's going to sit getting all the different letters in. I know that the Y is going to fit in this space, but I still have to get N, N, U, B. And it's going to be a little bit complicated towards the back with the tail. But we want to maintain as much of the silhouette as possible without affecting the image. So if I want to look at ways of dividing up the letters. I want to take a look at how the leg is here. I can use this as a separator for building out my letter. So this is going to be my one divide. I'm going to draw a line up. And within this space I can look to create at the shape of an end. If I'm not satisfied with the line, I can always again hit Control Z and then redo it if I want to go a little bit taller. But this still needs to be an N. And we want to maintain probably capital letters. It's going to be a lot more presentable, going to look a little bit cleaner overall. So I don't want to get rid of too much. I will go back in to fill in the open areas but I still want to maintain that this can look like an N going up, down, up again, but not drawing such big areas that I have to cover up too much of the silhouette. So now I have a N, a Y. Now I want to do the next N and looking at the next N, I have to think about the leg that has to be part of the design. So I'm going to look to make this part of the drop down of the end shape. I can use this again, other cut of the back leg to get me to divide where my ends are going to separate to the U. And this is drawing by hand, so it's not going to be clean. That's why I went with a smaller brush. It will allow me to be able to clean up some edges later on. But very quickly, after a couple lines, I have an N, an N, and a Y. Now I still have to fit a B and a U in here. And that's going to be a little bit complicated, but it's just a matter of breaking it down. I need to divide where the U and the B are going to fit. So I'm going to, again, use the paintbrush. I can always go back and change things if I'm not satisfied with it. But right now I have enough space that I can fit a B shape 
And if I'm trying to picture it in my head, I have to think about a capital B. There's a spot on the top, and I could use the bottom part to put a more flattened version of that B shape. The U should be pretty simple. It's just a matter of creating an opening at the top where I can go in, click and drag to draw out an arch shape or an elongated arch. Right now it looks like a V, but I'll show you how to clean that up in a minute. Or I can always redo, click and drag down the area. It's okay, I'm going to fill this in a little bit later. So, now I can still identify that I have a good shape overall. Gives me the U. And then for the B itself, I'm going to kind of ignore the tail and just let that be part of the shape of the B. But the shape of the B is helping to be made from the one arch in the middle. And then this one's going to be stretched, stretched out a little bit. But if I'm just looking at this straightforward, it's more of a flattened B shape at the bottom. But you need that open white gap to make that visible. Then the one on the top. Then I have the U shape, the N, the N, Y. So I can look to use the paintbrush again, and I can look to scale up the size of my brush so I can start filling in these spaces. Right now you can see it's a little bit rough over the lines. I can always zoom in, get closer. I don't want to make the gaps too thick in between the lines. Still want to maintain the majority of the silhouette. That should be enough to give me my Y. I can move on to the next parts, cleaning up these edges. Even if I mess up a little bit, again, I can always go back to the eraser tool, let the sharpen up the edge, clean this up so it looks a little bit more professional. I'm going to shrink down the size of my brush. I'm going to add in a couple little bit of spaces to help round out the bottom of the U so it doesn't look so much like a V. But overall, I'm still maintaining the shape of the silhouette without taking out too much.
want to make sure to clearly create that arch shape inside the B and down towards the flatter part is going to be, need to be cleaned up a little bit and even on the gaps in between the letters I want to create a little bit more separation so that they're clearly defined as separate letters I understand you're not necessarily that comfortable doing it by hand. Just take your time, do the best that you possibly can. Again, if I mess up, not satisfied with it, just hit Control Z. doesn't have to be done in one, you can always stop, continue on, make sure that you create that separation. Again, just rounding it out so it gives more of a U shape. The B I'm going to round out towards the top, so more looks more like a B. Again, I don't want to erase that too much. Then I can just go back in, clean up any edges. If I'm not satisfied with it. Make it as clean as possible. There's our bunny shape. If I'm looking to save this, I'm going to go up to file. I can save as a PSD file. You're going to be saving as a PSD file so I can see the work that you put into this design. Then you're going to upload that PSD file for the design itself. To give you a better example or another example, we're going to take a look at our shark. I'm going to create again a new layer where our shark text is going to go on top, creating out that separation of the shape. I can hide the bunny layer so it's out of my way, and I can make my shark visible again. So, with the shape of the shark, I think about how it's going to translate, whether getting the F shape, getting the H A R K. You want to break this down into separate separate areas. If I wasn't satisfied with the shape, or if I want to reflect it the opposite way so I can fit it in, I can always go up to edit at the top navigation, transform, and flip horizontally. That flips it to the other side, and I can look to possibly do my S in this direction. But for this example, I'm going to flip it over to the other direction. And again, same process. I want to use a thinner brush to start out, give me the separation between the different areas. So we'll have a good chance to figure out how it's going to sit in. 
looking at the fins of the shark, I want to use this as an indicator of where I can separate out a letter. When I do click right now, it says smart object must be rasterized first. If I take a look over at my layers panel, just like in Photoshop, rasterized image cannot be modified. So I need to rasterize it. I'm going to right click on this layer and then go down to rasterize. Now that little icon has disappeared. Now I can modify it. But it's good to see that I actually have to click on my shark, la shark type layer. That's the layer I should be drawing on, so I shouldn't have to rasterize any type of image. But now that I have the shark type layer, I'm going to draw out separations of where I want to fit my letters. So this is a natural divide, just looking at the fin on the bottom and the top. And I can try to start picturing how I want to break this down. I have to be able to get the S. This already has a natural look of creating the shape of an A, so I'm going to use this as my A, so I have to be able to get S and H inside of this area. Then I have to get R and K. And the K already kind of has a very defined quality with the tail. We want to use every aspect of this, or you can look to pluralize the animal if you have an additional area that you're not sure how to use and you can try to fit an S. But for this, I'm going to divide out the separations first. This whole piece is going to be the R. And there's a little lump on the top of the head. That's what I'm going to use for drawing out. Separating the S and the H. So yes, if you're looking at this, it's just a big club right now. You can't really see an S defined in this shape. But again, with that smaller paintbrush, I'm going to look to just create a couple lines to help give me definition of where my S shape might be. So if I draw one simple line over from the top right over to the left and down towards the bottom, if I'm looking at this right now, I have a S shape with two simple lines. For the H, one line on the top in the middle, one line on the bottom. That gives me that H shape. If I want to redo it, I can always do it a little bit lower. But I still have the two vertical pieces of the H and the connecting area. With A, we're looking for definitely that open section of the A. And I can add in a little element to give me a break for the bottom of the A. Just a matter of filling that in later on. The R, give them that gap for the top. And then we're going to want to add a little bit of gap, a little bit more element to separate the bottom. But we have to also make sure to incorporate a round element over the side to help create that sharp rotation of the R. And then with the K, just like with the H, two vertical lines should, be, should give me a good separation between the left side and the right side. I can always look to sharpen up the middle of this so it gives me more of a K shape. So we already have it all placed out. Now it's a matter of going back in, getting a thicker lines, really helping create the definition for each of the letters. So I'm going to adjust the size of my brush. Sure, not with the S shape. I want to give it a little bit of curve on the inside parts, so I might have to go to a smaller brush. bit too small. And I can always go with a bigger brush and then look to erase back later. 
back to the eraser. I can clean up these edges, make it look a little bit more professional. Thick line just helps me give that separation between the S and the H. And it definitely helps to create that space showing the left side and the right side of the H shape. I want to redraw this or expand out any areas. I can again go with eraser. We haven't affected the original design. Maybe I want to define the R a little bit stronger. I want to be careful not to erase too much. Take your time, don't rush through the design. Make sure it looks as professional as possible. If I want to go with a thinner brush, I can always reduce it down. Rounding out the R, I can clean up the shape of the K on the back side and create a little bit more thickness. It's really to find out the K over on the right. So it still maintains the overall shape and design of the shark silhouette. But when it comes to submitting, we want to be submitting a Photoshop file and a JPEG. This way it can clearly see the work that you put into it, being able to see the separation of the layers. I'm going to go up to File at the top navigation, go down to Export, and save it as a JPEG first. Quality, we can put it at up to 100% and just hit save, and then file, save as PSD. You won't be able to open the PSD file on your computer, but you're gonna be submitting me that Photoshop file. 
as well as the JPEG. So if I click on that, open up in Photoshop, comes out crystal clear, looks great. I hope you guys have fun with this project.